Today on Toy Geeks, we're going to talk about our latest toy hauls, including hunting those new G.I. Joe classified figures, as well as still hunting those Motu Origins figures. We're also going to talk about the last tier for the Hasbro HasLab Sentinel, and then we're also going to lament the death of DC Direct. All that and more today on Toy Geeks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Toy Geeks. I am one of your hosts, Jay, and with me, as always, is John. How you doing, John? I am doing fantastic. Uh, we have uh, no freeze or today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> have, uh, John worked on his uh, internet all week, so uh, we are we are smooth sailing uh, for John today, which is good. Which is good. I did <laughs> found a, a mile of unknown coax cable running through my walls. Luckily, oh. help help me out. Nice. So I was able to just hook everything up right in my office. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, so, yes, we took off last week uh, because somebody outside of his normal Internet issues jackhammered <laughs> one of his lines. But we are back here. And in between that time, uh, John and I had a conversation because we loved how much how fun it was for our PowerCon kind of post-con recap live version of Toy Geeks. And what we decided to do was kind of always do Toy Geeks live. So our normal show now will be recorded live, generally 9 p.m. on Sundays. You'll see the posts up uh, ahead of time. So we will continue to do like special post-event live shows. I'm 100% certain we will. There'll be events in the future. Uh, but even our normal show will do it live. So definitely drop the comments in the co live comment section. Uh, we'll plus them into the conversation, which I think will be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, excited uh, to do Toy Geeks this way. But now if you subscribe to the podcast, it is still going to be posted on the podcast feed on Mondays. So if you prefer that way to listen to the show, that will still be going on. So no changes there for our podcast uh, audio listeners. But if you want to see a video version with John and I, our beautiful faces, <laughs> as well as some video content and pictures and stuff like that. Uh, to show what we're talking about. Uh, this is the program for you. All right, a couple of uh, housekeeping things. Uh, on the Geek Dad li uh, live channel, uh, I reviewed the, the Comic-Con exclusive Tron figure, which is so freaking cool with the black light. It just looks awesome. Uh, also, finally got a Casey Jones, the cartoon version, which was great. And then tomorrow, we're doing a post-con recap for DC Fandom. Uh, with my good friend Ralph, uh, who we do Geek Dad Live with. So that'll be tomorrow at 9 o'clock uh, on YouTube.com slash Geek Dad Life. Uh, we talked a little bit about it before, but a lot of cool stuff out of DC Fandom this weekend. Yes. Yeah, the Wonder Woman trail looks pretty good. Yeah! We got our first look at Cheetah, which is awesome. Um, all right, so uh, we start out each show with our recent toy hauls. Um how how was this week for you, John? Um, it was it was a little bit slim pickings. Um, mostly, uh, you know, I got the I got the GI Joe classified series. I got um, uh, Beachhead, mm -hmm. um, the Target uh, Cobra Island um, Roadblock, and uh, Scarlet, and then I've got a Origins He Man figure. And now all four of those were from um, our good friend Gary Lane. He happened to find all those in the wild. And every time we would find something, it would say, hey, do you need that? Do you need that? Yep, yep, absolutely. So we met up this week, and I had found a Skeletor for him. Mm -hmm. So it was a one for four trade. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, he gave you all of those for one? No, no, no. I, no I, um, we traded straight up for the, the He-Man and the Skeletor. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, but I had just paid him in advance for the, gotcha. for the three Joes. Gotcha. Nice, nice. Um, I don't have a picture of it here, but uh, a good mutual friend, Jason from Chromag Toys, he found that new Alpha 5 uh, Zordon set. At a, oh, he did? Yeah, so uh, he, he picked that one uh, up for me. Um, so I, I've kind of been like halfway on the, the, the Hasbro Power Rangers Lightning line, um, but I've kind of just been kind of wanting it. I've, I've been hoping <laughs> to like a five pack with all of the characters eventually or something because... The main rangers, or at least for me, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers have just been spread out so far. Yeah, but if you if you look on eBay, um, you can usually get pretty decent lots of them. You know, for oh, less yeah. than re for less than retail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's what I'll do. <laughs> yeah, go after just get some loose ones. Don't bother going for the package ones because it seems mm -hmm. like people are just either into it or they got in and just dumping them. Yep, 
Okay. Well, that, okay. that's good advice. Good sound advice. Um, I, I heard you also got some uh, more legends to the I did. of legends that you've got already. Yes. Yeah. So that 320 plus legends that I did have has worked its way down to probably around 140 now. Uh, but then I picked up probably another 12 or 15, but all Iron Man ones between. Yeah, that's kind of a crappy picture, but um, <laughs> all between Toy Biz and early Hasbro. So like the Iron Monger and then the movie series Walmart Waves, which were some really great figures. And some of them are extremely hard to find. You know, there's mm -hmm. a really good war machine that's really hard to find um, from the movie series mm -hmm. from the, um, the, the Iron Man set that you see on the right there. Yeah, there, there's some really good ones, some really good concept series, too. That um, I don't know. I kind of kind of wish they would go back and revisit some of those because there's a lot more Legends collectors now than than ever. You know, I I wonder with Iron Man kind of taking a pause in the films. Do you think you're going to have a lull of Iron Man toys? Because there was a mo I mean, it was kind of the Batman of Marvel where we'd get a Iron Man all the damn time. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, at least they would change it up. I mean, you know, between Mark forty three and Mark forty six, sometimes the differences were so so small. But hey, you know, if you're a, a, a cinematic completist, you mm -hmm. know, I guess I guess you want them. Yeah, but you're right though. It was kind of like almost like reverse colors. <laughs> yeah, or it's like you know his arc reactor went from triangle to round. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I didn't like the triangle one, so I liked it when he, he did go back. Uh, <laughs> uh, <tape. laughs> um, so I I had a few. Uh, pick I feel like this was a really heavy pickup week uh, for me, and it's been two weeks, so maybe two weeks worth. But a lot of the uh, Comic Con exclusive stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. started to, to trickle in. I reviewed the Baxter Stockman. I reviewed the Tron. One I didn't review, mainly because I didn't want to take it out of the package, uh, is the uh, Dennis uh, Nedry uh, exclusive. <laughs> uh, and it's really cool. So it kind of like, it's. I was thinking it'd be the same size as a real Barber Soul can, but it, as you can see, it's, it's bigger. It's much bigger. Yeah. Um, but it's cool. Uh, and then you kind of twist it and then it show. Oh, I did it backwards. Anyways, you twist it and then. It <laughs> uh, so I did take some video of all of the quotes. So I'll, I'll play that right now so you can hear those. Uh, uh, uh. You didn't say the magic word. Dodson. Dodson. We've got Dodson here. And the one year extinct. Look at you, Bobby Dodson. I'm totally unappreciated in my time. <laughs> hey, you but, know that that could be some of the best voice recorded toy right? feature. <laughs> it it sounds great, and you know, it it comes the it's a pretty good sized speaker uh, that the sound comes out of. Uh, and yeah, so I assume they will make uh, like a normal retail release of it. So I was like, I don't. This is just cool. I'm gonna keep it like this, and then I'll just display it in the barbasol can. Uh, but there was one other detail that I did want to highlight. Uh, the the kind of the directions on the back is, is funny because you have unscrewed bottom can fill uh, the Carmen's Dinosaur Embers delivered to the East Dock, shaving tips, drive carefully and avoid crashing your vehicle, uh, keep glasses on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Warning, do not play fetch with a Dilophosaurus. Do not get venom in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, I thought that you know just it's neat when little details like that uh get thrown into it i thought that was uh pretty cool uh also related to the jurassic park legacy collection which i really dig uh my target finally got that uh, uh isla Nubar escape set uh which has john ha hammond which was last year's comic-con exclusive um and then you also have the ellie uh sattler sattler um figure um which is cool because one is an exclusive and then the other ones are really hard figure to find so that's cool and you had kind of two movie accurate uh raptors which we haven't gotten yet and then it came with this also little banner that from the famous scene in the movie uh you know when he when the t-rex beats the two raptors and then it kind of falls down as the t-rex roars so I got it mainly for that stupid little banner. Uh, <laughs> so I, I put it up there kind of, you know, falling, you know, in my case behind the T-Rex. Yeah. So uh, I thought it was, I thought it was cool. Um, but I have, I already had the other two figures. So I, I, I throw those back into the wind. I, I <laughs> Give them to the kids. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, 
And then also, we have locally in North Carolina, it's called the North Carolina Underground Toy Swap. And it's kind of a, a neat little thing. And I'll show some video footage of, of me going there. But it's mainly designed not to necessarily be like a toy show where dealers set up and sell you things. It's mainly to be like where toy collectors can come together and exchange uh, toys. And what's kind of especially neat about that is in this kind of post-COVID world, it's generally set up outside in parking lots and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, being outside in the sun, um, you know, wearing masks is a fairly safe way to kind of have the toy buying experience. You can see here, this is the gentleman I traded uh, to get a Destro and Spider-Man from. But uh, but yeah, it was it was kind of a neat time uh, that kind of scratched the the con itch without feeling like I was, you know, putting me or my family in jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yeah, he had a Destro. I was not able to find a Destro yet, so I traded. I had a, a Motu or extra Motu Origins He Man and Skeletor, so I got the Destro and then the '90s uh, kind of card back Spider Man or the, the animated Spider Man. Um, mainly because one, I was kind of trading like for like a little bit. Uh, I had yep. I didn't really care, but I wanted a Legends uh, Spider Man, and this one looked, you know. Spider-Man enough. So, <laughs> that. Um, have you have you seen the the nineties uh, Spider-Man stuff? I have. I I saw um, you know Green Goblin and Electro uh, in in the store. Um, there was somebody left a, an open factory case on the shelf, took everything out but those two figures, and just left the the shipper box there. Damn. So whether whether you know somebody went pallet diving and then just bothered to put the the shipping case on the shelf in the spot where it's supposed to be, <laughs> or it was just an employee. You know, that's, that's my best guess is an employee clocked out, brought the shipping case out, put it on the shelf, took what they wanted and, you know, checked out. Dang, that's ruthless. That is ruthless. <laughs> um, but I guess uh, that's cool. Yeah, th that's what, that's the uh, mindset of a toy junkie, I guess. I guess. But you know, <laughs> You know, I guess there, there's no unwritten rules or whatever. There's, but I feel like there's a certain decorum. But right, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and one last thing for me before we get into the Joes, because I feel like the jo it was a big week for Joes in the Raleigh Triangle mm -hmm. or NC area. They finally hit us pretty strong. Um, but it was these Star Wars figures, Star Wars Mission Fleet. And uh, I, I bring them up because you uh, brought a, a tidbit of uh, news up to me. Uh, do you, do you want to share that news before I kind of get into uh, the other thing here? Oh, sure. So there was um, the, the Star Wars stream event uh, last Friday for, you know, the upcoming vintage collection, Black Series, um, anything that's coming out new from Hasbro Pulse or, yeah. um, you know, the new stuff. Yep. And there's a set of, I think it's eight multi-packs mm -hmm. and the, the box has the celebrate the saga logo on it. And this is the retirement of the five point of articulation star Wars figures. Yeah. This is, this is Hasbro's way of giving them the send off into the vault. Yeah. And it's, it's apparently, um, you know, the end of five POA figures, which is, you know, it's been their bread and butter since the the seventies. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I think it's it's just a way to sell some multi packs. You know, Probably, they'll, be, right? they'll be back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, five poa. They uh, like five poa is Star Wars. You know, so it's it's yeah. crazy to think of a world without five poa three and three quarter inch Star Wars figures. Um, and it, I guess we've seen the signs because even the vintage collection, which is their kind of highly articulated three and three quarter inch stuff, it, it's harder to find. You don't see it mm -hmm. as often. They're definitely going more six inch scale. Um, uh, but still, I, I dug that they went back to the five POA kind of around Rogue One. I feel like they, they brought back just straight up five POA figures. Uh, yeah. Uh, which I thought was great because it's, you know, as a collector, some people like to, to crap on extra articulation or too little articulation. But for kids, I think that three and three quarter inch five POA figures, it's a good toy. Like it's it's easy to play. Yeah. And so that's where, you know, I saw these uh, up on, you know, the, the toy racks. And so I'm guessing this is what Hasbro 
uh, thinks is going to replace um, the the five POA Star Wars line, which um, is cool. They look cool. The artwork looks fine. So and it, it appealed enough to me because uh, you know my kids love Ahsoka Tano, uh, so this was a great way to get a figure for that. And uh, this Mandalorian uh, two pack that comes with the child uh, was like cool. All right, fine. Let's let's go for that. Um, I'll, I'll pick them up, see what they're like. And, um, so I opened them and I hated them. <laughs> and I, I want to share why they're tiny. They're super small. I feel like the packaging is deceptive and I shot some video here to show you. Now I'm comparing these two figures to a mask figure. Now, what are what are masks? Those are like two and a half inches. I, I think they're just two, maybe. I don't even think they're two and a half. All right, I could well, be wrong, but regardless, you know, they're gonna, not the. They're, go ahead. <laughs> let's go ahead. let's see. Let's see. I want to see it. I, I feel like mask to me is like as small as it can get. Well, let's mm -hmm. let's get side by side with a with a mask figure here. Oh my god! Look at that. That is. Oh man! It's tiny. No. What, mm -hmm. what am I supposed to do with this? Like it's you can, a kid can't even play with this toy. My my youngest son is two and a half years old, and he loves Ahsoka Tano, and he didn't. It's too small to play with. And you know, I I, I have it here again, and you would think, <laughs> oh, maybe it's just because it's the female <laughs> figure. No, here's the here's the Mando. It's the same height as the Ahsoka. That is ridiculous. You know, when, when you showed the, the box art in, in package, I kind of just I looked at it and you assume it looks like it's an Imagine X figure. Yeah. Like it looks about the same size as Imagine X. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, cool. That's neat. But here's an Imagine X figure. Nope. Look Not, at that. It's still, yeah. Like, that's way too small. Way too small. And, uh, and the, they have kind of good articulation. You have like a ball jointed head. Uh, you It has like a cut joint, ball jointed uh, mm -hmm. arm and then a swivel at the hand. Um, and then just two points for the legs. No no articulating knees or anything. So like, I guess that is fine, but it's just way too small. So I don't know who these are for. Um, is it even a good price point? No, I think the Ahsoka was like, I feel like seven bucks. And again, she comes with this little speeder thing, um, or that that little I don't know whatever. Yeah, yeah, that. whatever that is. <laughs> um, and then the Mando speeder bike. I, I didn't bring it here to show, but he can't even really sit on it. He can't even like do what he's showing in the art. <laughs> it's super lame. And so you know, I, I'll be curious to see what you all think. Maybe if you are watching this live right now, or maybe if you want to email us, Toy a Geek Show at gmail.com if you're listening to this uh, on the audio feed. But uh, the only silver lining of, of the two figures, and I kind of have to go back around here for comparing them here to the mass figures, uh, is the uh, the child figure. You don't even see it in the packaging. It comes with the little uh, bassinet or whatever. And it is the same size or same scale to the Black Series Baby Yoda or the child figure. So... Um, as you can see here, this is that's the black series, the child, and it fits in there pretty good. Hmm. So, so that's like that's the only silver lining to me. Uh, other than that, it's a big old, uh, I think, uh, you said it with the you know, X Men, uh, Hall of Fame set. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like the equivalent of like you know, a, a Big Mac in the pictures, and then you unwrap the Big Mac. <laughs> 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 oh man yeah no nope. fail major fail has bro yeah I, I, it, and like you said what what's the age range you know on the package for you know yeah. something that small when when it's you know visually on the package it looks like all right i can give this to my three or four year old mm -hmm. but still probably not yeah exactly uh what a what a what a total waste and again imagine next is great like mm -hmm. this boy is great like for kids, I mean, you could go up into seven, maybe even eight. This would still be fine. Right. But this is nothing. I, I, I forgot to do. I want to put a clip, you know, from uh, uh, 
Zoolander. <laughs> what is this? Library for ants? Like I, I looked through the store. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I gotta do it, Hasbro. Star Wars Mission Fleet. <laughs> You dropped the turd on that one. <laughs> okay. Oh man. But again, that's a bummer. That's a yeah, bummer. But that that Mandalorian set, and I here it's I took a picture of like with the in the little bassinet thing. So I that's that's at least I feel like I, I got something worthwhile. <laughs> that's it. One accessory. Not even shown on the packaging. Anyway. All right. <laughs> moving on, moving on from disappointment to absolute falling in love. And that is uh, the Hasbro uh, new G.I. Joe classified series. So uh, one of my local targets got a whole bunch in and uh, I was able to go and, and pick quite a few of these things up. And, you know, I. And I think I talked about it on the show. I wasn't uh, super excited about it, uh, to be honest. I'm a, I'm a vintage collector. You know, I have a USS flag. I have most of the, the big vintage figures from that line. Uh, and on picture, on spec, what I saw, I was like, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, get any of these. I'm not like I love the toys, but I was never like super into the cartoon or anything. Um, but. I saw them at my target and I was like, these are awesome. They're so cool. Did you pick these up a few weeks ago? They, they showed up at your Walmart, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, my Walmart had one of the, the end cap, you know, like the, the yeah. side displays for an end cap yep. and it was mostly cleaned out outside of um, snake eyes and the uh, regular roadblock. Yep. Um, so I picked those up yeah. and then uh, I think it was last week. They got a re. They got a you know another shipment, and I picked up Duke and Destro, which I haven't even opened any yet. And then, um, like I said, Gary picked me up the uh, the Target ones, and then he already yeah. had a Scarlet for me. So I've just visually just looking at them on the in the package. Yep. You know, I'm definitely in on this series for the ones I want anyway. Yeah, like to me, it was there's something about. Like from picture, you just don't see the detail. But then when you see them in hand, the detail is incredible on these figures. Like mm -hmm. they look fantastic. Uh, and pulling some from the chat here, uh, PDF says, I found or pre ordered all the new Joes except Baroness. She is going to be tough to find, I think. Um, <laughs> PDF also has two in cap display. <laughs> no room to hang them on, though. PD Dubs, wow. Jeez. Two. One display for somebody else. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Petey, when you when you got the two displays, did you buy them full? Or were you lucky enough to be able to get them empty? <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have somebody from Brazil, Rodrigo. Welcome. Hello. The toy Geeks going international. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, they just, they look awesome. And, and you know, here is uh, the snake eyes. So, so you haven't taken any of these out of the box yet? No, I, I pulled out a couple just out of the box. Yeah. I left them in the tray for a live reaction. Oh, a live reaction. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Peter, so, you're doing that. He says, I was lucky to find them empty. <laughs> oh, that's lucky. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fresh so here we go. Oh, you got the, head. Head, the Target exclusive. Yes, sir. And you know what? First impression. Mm-hmm. It's tight. It's like it's a really good sculpt. Yeah. And and he's I mean on first you know on first appearance I, he's probably the closest uh version to his vintage counterpart. Mm -hmm. You know maybe outside of Destro. I think Destro he probably looks like his his vintage That's figure. It was pretty straight up, yeah. Mm -hmm. But this guy's awesome. They even gave him the butterfly uh joints in the shoulders. It's not just uh you know a joint Yep. At the shoulder, they get the butterflies as well. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, the articulation, you know, out of the box, the articulation is completely unique to this line. That's like what I noticed immediately kind of taking it out of the box. Uh, how about like the, the hip joints and the leg joints, like everything? It kind of feels like a, a 
you know, an upscaled actual like GI Joe figure, unlike, you know, a black series version of a GI Joe figure kind of wholly feels like its own thing. Yeah. The, um, like the details are sculpted into the joint cut so well, Mm -hmm. like the, the knee pads. And like, when you look at the back of the knee pad, Mm -hmm. um, at the, the double joint, like everything is hidden very well. Yeah. These are good. These are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the, and another thing I really love about what they've done with these figures is, and I'll show the snake eyes, for example, all of his accessories are on this figure and can be held on this figure. No, there's no like having to put some accessories on the side. So, you know, his side gun and the feet for his, uh, his sword. Um, he has another thing pocket for this uh, blade here. Um, his uh, pistol, the, the it, every single figure, there is not a figure that can't hold every single accessory. That's awesome. You're not going to have any, you know, missing tiny little knives. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, here's the Scarlet, who I love. I freaking love Scarlet. Are you, who are you opening next? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm putting Beachhead's parts okay. on him. <laughs> but, so Scarlet is just gorgeous. I, I freaking love the Scarlet figure. Um, and uh, so, yeah, really. But again, she has three knives. Uh, two go in the back of her uh, like uh, quiver, um, and she has another knife that go up here in the front. And you know she's just so badass, like just a really cool figure. And and you know Roadblock probably comes the least amount of stuff, but he has the big gun. Um, and he has a clip that goes into the into the you know into the his gun, big old gun. I just I just popped open Scarlet. What, what's what's your take on Scarlet <laughs> up close here? It's really good. A and lot the, better than I a lot better than I was expecting. The the head sculpt is fantastic, and I know it's using its kind of photorealistic technology. And she's got freckles, like they, they freckles. like the freckles yeah. are perfect. Yeah, they they just they nailed it. They nailed it on so many levels, which is just cool. It's it's really cool when. You know, they go out of their way to make amazing figures. So, you know, I got to I got to do a bit of a, you know, a, a, an alternate take here because I kind of I, I feel like I poo pooed a bit on the line seeing them in the pictures, but seeing them in person blows me away. And the whole or at least all these figures that I got. I, I like them all. The the only one that was kind of like, eh, I don't have him up here is Duke. I was like, eh, Duke's Duke. Um, he's kind of like one of the more boring characters, uh, you know, out, out of this first wave. Mm-hmm. But they look great. <laughs> you you know, one thing I just noticed is on her ankles, mm-hmm. um, there's no exposed pin. Oh, okay. So yeah, so. Ha- so Hasbro's been um, experimenting with this um, this method of assembly for a figure, I guess. Yeah. So um, I want to say that uh, they they announced it first on um, I think the new War Machine for Marvel Legends, mm-hmm. where it was going to be like a kind of a big deal because getting hidden pins and the way that it's done in the factory is it's not easy. Um, the, the four horsemen had talked about this quite a while ago. There was an interview with Eric Treadway mm-hmm. um, with uh, he uh, They were talking about their, the power Lords figures because it was their first um, sort of forte into doing hidden yeah. joint pins. Mm-hmm. And he says, you know, when they do it at the factory, the, the pin is essentially put in there when it's in the mold. Mm-hmm. And then the, the new part, it goes in there and gets molded around the existing pin that's inside of it. It's, it's, it's a weird process the way they explain he, the way they explained it. And it was very expensive to do at the time. Yeah. Um, but maybe just Hasbro figured out a way to do it um, more affordably, mm-hmm. you know, or did invented a new way to do it. Maybe <laughs> I, it's, it's an engineering Marvel. Like it's an engineering Marvel. And I, you know, I got to agree with kind of Dave here again, I love the toys as a kid. Love the toys, 
but I never had a the cartoon to me was always kind of boring compared to some of the other stuff out there. Just to me, I know that's not everybody. Uh, but Dave says I'm very impressed with the Joe line. I don't really have any nostalgia for the brand. They're just really good figures, and I kind of got to echo because I wasn't gonna get into this line, but these figures just really amazing action figures uh, and really fresh takes on some iconic characters. I've always loved the Snake Eyes kind of Scarlet um, kind of connection there. Um, and yeah, the Destro looks freaking awesome. Like, Scarlet has a really good hidden ab crunch. Right? It's, it's, um, it's very much like the uh, the Mythic Legions figures. Uh, PD Debs talks about the Cobra Troopers. Now, those are part of that kind of Target. Uh, it was a Cobra Island exclusive. I yep. found those. Those keep getting scooped up right away. Uh, so by the time I got to these, those were already well gone, as well as the uh, Beachhead. Um, the articulation is just suburb. The most fluid figures on the market. The only thing I wish they had were some extra hands. Um, yeah, I agree. Of another one what you taking out now or no uh, oh. i got roadblock out now the, the the cobra island one he is awesome I, di I didn't bring him out here what i love about him is his sunglasses are legit sunglasses like they're <laughs> actually you can see his painted pupils through the sunglasses it's incredible i gotta get these things out of here and looking at the baroness uh, her glasses are like legit glasses as well, which just again a really cool action figure engineering feat, which is fantastic. Um, I took the wow. Marvel Shang Chi and made a custom quick kick. I was really happy with how it turned out. Oh, P you gotta send us a picture. Oh, wow. yeah, so we can see that. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, the Cobra Troopers look great. Like I'm excited to find those eventually. Um. And it seems like they're doing enough. They're doing a lot of variants kind of right out the get go. Um, and, you know, at the NC Underground Toy Swap, we talked about, you know, uh, I think that Cobra has like some red paint on his shoulder and some other things. So um, I think there'll definitely be plenty of Cobra Troopers out there eventually being an army builder. Yeah, I would, I would hope. You know, I'm willing to bet that the way that um, Hasbro did the was it aim aim and Hydra troopers they did the um the hasbro pulse uh sort of army builder pack where they came in a white white yes. uh, box with like gray deco on it mm -hmm. and they were like 15 dollars or 12 dollars yep something like that mm -hmm. i'm willing to bet they'll they'll go down that same avenue for some cobra troopers yeah i mean why not I, it'll yeah sell. it'll absolutely no i mean people it's one of the biggest army trooper figures of all time so like go all out and people will buy them People will come, Ray. People will come. Um, all right. So we've got like our out of the box impressions. I do want to take just a moment to also say another thing that really impressed me about like having them in hand and seeing them in person was the packaging. Like I thought they did a really good job on the packaging. Like it feels really premium. There's a lot of like the way the window kind of wraps around the side, I thought was fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. I love on the edge, and here's the the ones that I had, just the unique art for each character uh i thought just looks amazing yeah and and you can you can really tell that it's different artists working on yeah. each one there, there's such a great style yeah for for each each different um it's not really card art <laughs> or yeah i guess it is <laughs> box art card art yeah. yeah box art card art and if you look at the i don't know if you have um different ones back. there but the cobra island ones on on the back each each Cobra Island picture is different. Oh, it so, is. Yeah. Oh. So so you get different um, sort of like close up aerial views. Yeah. Uh, that are zoomed in on the different parts of the island. So the one and, I have is the Cobra Island uh, roadblock. Yep. So on the beachhead one, it's a, it's almost a more forward view of the island. I can't get a good picture of it there. Yeah, it's like a glare a little bit. Yeah. If you put yeah. it closer, it might lose the glare, but yeah, there you go. There we go. So you can see like the close up yeah. parts of the island are different. Oh wow, yeah. Look at that. I, I'm sure an enterprising person is probably like 
taking pictures or something. At some point. <laughs> right, it's got to be out there. I'm surprised it hasn't on any of our Facebook groups. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, um, I did. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You want to? Oh, say I was going to say. Um, so a couple of years ago, when Hasbro announced that they were going to try and move away from using so many plastic uh, aspects in their packaging, it's, this is a complete opposite of what they were it aiming is, at. The window going around. <laughs> it's a thick plastic. Like yeah. it's really, it's it's like a rigid, hard plastic casing. And I'm just going to show the side. Like so, the the window kind of wraps around, and you can see it here. And each figure kind of has unique little. Uh, symbols that kind of represent their strengths or whatever rep rep represents them, but um, so that that so the that part is still plastic of the window box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a it's like a plastic cover that goes around the whole thing. Um, they, I'll, be, I'll be keeping these. I will <laughs> yeah. try. <laughs> yeah, so what I did on my, I have it in one of my little expert squares right now. I have them all kind of as the background to the figures. Oh, um, nice. Um, Dave says, will the Target Wave be back online? I don't know. Like, Target online is kind of garbage. Um, yeah. And and there was a there was a big contest almost between Hasbro and Target. If anybody else read about that or heard about it, mm -mm. you know, these... The the pre order dates was set for these figures, mm -hmm. and then the um the street date, the shelf date for the figures in store was going to be August fourteenth. Well, when everybody you know tried to pre order, and then yeah. the bot the bots took over <laughs> and bought all the figures in the matter of three seconds. Yeah, um, Hasbro tried to you know uh, please the fans a little bit, maybe like cushion the blow, mm -hmm. and they just told Target, you know, when you get them in, put them out, you know. Yep. No street date, yeah. But a lot of the target employees and the the stockroom managers are like, well, no, we'll adhere to the original plan. And some of them just didn't. They did what tar what Hasbro said. Mm -hmm. So I think the the problem with Baroness not being around anywhere, it seems like, is mm -hmm. maybe you know the, her production was backed up, and whether or not she had a later street date, who knows. I think yeah. there's there's very little info on on whenever Baroness will be around, even though she was on the same day of that pre order. Yeah, she's showing up. She is starting to show up. Um, I don't think it showed up in North Carolina yet. You know, I, I kind of I think there's a few people that are really. I mean, Baroness is you know one of those uh, uh, characters that ever, and it's and it comes with the bike and all that. Yeah, cool set. Um, so I, she's going to be in high demand, but again. With ha with we've already seen with this line, we already have like seventy five Cobra Commanders, different ones. That we're <laughs> so I, I, I'm not worried that I won't get a Baroness eventually. Uh, yeah, I just I you know I just I gotta give kudos to to Hasbro here because I was not particularly gonna go for these, but then once I saw them, like, dude, I am I am in this thing, mm -hmm. freaking cool. These are great toys, like just really good toys. Um, so yeah, love them, love them. Oh, and I did want to just take a moment. The normal release, like kind of poster on the back. Mm -hmm. That is so freaking cool. It really is. And if you notice all of the figures or the characters featured, everything has been announced or released except for those alley vipers up top. Mm -hmm. When will they do that? Because that's going to be like a super mad dash to buy those guys. Oh, yeah. I, th I think I think there'll be more in demand than the Cobra Troopers. Uh, probably, yeah. Especially if they keep that deco, the very you know original release deco with the shield, with the face visor that goes up and down. Yep, I I, I agree. Yeah, because I mean, I feel like Cobra Commander, you know, is a more or I'm not I'm not sorry, not Commander Cobra uh, Troopers. Mm -hmm. are much more kind of early waves of the toys versus like later army builders that are probably more popular with people. Yeah. And I like how they, 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 they kind of did a, a mishmash of um, original vehicles mixed in with um, the retaliation, the 25th anniversary, um, pretty much everything from Joe's from eighties on. Mm-hmm. You know, because because there's, 
you know, the mall are up front. You see the bridge layer, you see Armadillo, you see the, the Wolverine, but then you see the, the sky sweeper, I think it was called. Yeah. And that was just a, like a, a, a retro fire bat jet from the, the terror drone. Um, they added like big sort of uh, jet boosters on it and they mm -hmm. painted it. Uh, I think it was blue. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was, I don't know if that was the movie line or hunt for, uh, I can't remember what it was called. Um, what was that? It was like 30th anniversary. I think I can't remember. Uh, There's so many series after the, movie, the, the first movie. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, first vehicle. What's your pick? What's the first one they're doing? Trouble bubble. <laughs> All right, or, or or the Fang because they're they're small enough, you know, yep. it won't it won't break the bank. Yep. Um, you know, I, I don't see any, I don't foresee anything much bigger than that for for a while. Maybe a his tank. Oh. Yeah, I would say his tank or Vamp would be like one of. Yeah, the Vamp would be good. I love Vamp. Got to have Vamp. Vamp first one, and then you go Vamp two. Yeah, because uh, I mean, even though Baron Baroness is coming with that motorcycle, it's not really. Is it Joe Cannon? I, I don't know where that bike came from. Probably a Legends one. They just kind of yeah. slapped <laughs> <something. laughs> knows for sure. All right. Uh, some other comments here. Uh, Days of Packaging is really cool. I love the poster on the back. The only thing I wish there were file cards inside the package like McFarlane. That would have been cool, especially for the Cobra Island stuff, like expanding the story or something like that as part of the figures. Uh, yeah, that would be good. Comic book or something. Cobra Island, probably. Something outside of this. Yeah, um, I think there's always been Cobra Island. Even with the 25th anniversary, there yeah. was uh, defense and attack on Cobra Island sets. But the the bio cards were such a big part of the the, the for so long. It's like essential to the you know real American hero line. Mm -hmm. So it would have been really cool if there there was file cards. I think that's a great that's a great call, out, Dave. Uh, maybe something they can do down the line. But file cards would be huge, especially to kind of you can expand the story with it. I think. You know, uh, kudos to Motu Classics. I think they did, had, did a really good job with the little file cards and kind of telling their own story. You know, even though it's kind of like on the fly. Uh, I thought that did a really good job. Um, Shifcon just found a Cobra Trooper today. Kudos nice. to you, Shifcon. Uh, and PD Dubs, just like, just rubbing in our face, PD. <laughs> I have six troopers. Got lucky and found each one at a different target in early August. Good for you. P Petey, P P P around us. Petey is just spending the time in the stores. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. <laughs> You're the wealth, Petey. No, good for you. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Find uh, it in the wild. That's good. Uh, Master Hoarder uh, says Rattler is, is, is his pick there. That would be awesome. That would be really good. But I, oof, that'd be big. Mm -hmm. I think that would be has a HasLab project. Probably. Probably. For sure. For sure. Uh, uh, are these Cobra Island stuff a target only? Yeah, that's like the target exclusive gym mm -hmm. as it is. Yep. Right now. Is there anything Walmart exclusive? Not yet. Not only yet. It's only, uh, yeah, it's only a matter of time. <laughs> when we get the announcement, we'll play the old. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's something to <laughs> at least the target exclusives. They, they're kind of sporadic when they first come out, but eventually they start to just show up and it's easier to get them for a period. It's like maybe like a week. So, you know, uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, it's not that bad. Yeah. I don't know. I, it seems like they're not just doing many, you know, reshipments to the stores. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's going to be, you know, they'll get the one and two cases onto the next wave, kind of like Marvel Legends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had no Joes until this line came out. I have a pro wow. So from no Joes at all to this, that's with, with two store displays, PD. Yeah, two store displays. <laughs> we need to have like PD send us some video of his collection. Uh, PD, PD, what was your main collection focus prior to this? That's a great question. That's a great question. Um, Master Hoarder, how the f are we supposed to be able to army build the troopers? I know Master Hoarder, but I think. Like I, we talked about earlier, if you missed it, there, there's with Haslabs, with I'm sorry, with Hasbro Pulse, with all the things that Hasbro has, like they'll, they'll make like an army trooper, like two yeah. trooper pack or whatever. They'll do something to give us, you know, more uh, trooper builders, army builder figures. That they'll do it. There's money there. People will buy it. They'll make mm -hmm. it. Uh, they, they could they could do you know the the boxes alternate head with a black uh, face yeah. mask, a red face mask. Yeah, you know. Yeah. 
they'll be, do be patient. They'll, yeah. they'll come around. Totally. They totally will. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about with the Joes, there's again, there's 75 variants of Cobra Commander. Which one are you going with? Uh, honestly, probably whatever first I find. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I really want a, a, ho a hooded version over any, but okay, so the, the, they haven't done that one yet. Like the kind mm -hmm. of draped hood. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, I'd be happy with just whatever I find. I, I, I don't really have any, you know, particular one I like more than the other. How about I, you? I kind of I like the more blue one. Probably I think just the basic release one I think I like. Mm -hmm. The Comic-Con exclusive is neat, but I don't like the the black and gold as much. Um and then the other regal one is kind of I don't know. I think I just like the regular retail release. Whatever is the closest to the Mickey Mouse Cobra mm -hmm. Commander is what I probably want to go with. And what's funny is is like for me as a kid too, the hooded one was like my Cobra Commander that I had as a kid. And I had that one and they did like a all black version of him later. So I had like the male yep. one and then the black one. So as a kid, if I was nostalgic, that's what I'm going for. But as an adult collector, I just like the the, the kind of this the steel mask more. I think it's mm -hmm. more fun. But I get it. I either way. Either way. Uh, Pete, to answer your question on what was this collecting thing before, uh, horror and Marvel Legends and Monster Pocket and Ghostbusters and Spawn too much. Oh, too bad. Pete. It's not too bad. We've that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah and, it, and Monster My Pocket. That's a that's a that's a good one. I mean, that's a that's a niche market. Yeah, but it's tough. It's it is. It's kind of expensive. It's pricey mm -hmm. for you know little pocket figures. <laughs> um, great line. It's a really great line. Monsters in my pocket. Um, we have a local toy collector here uh, named also named Jay big monster in my pocket as well as battle beast fan. Mm -hmm. He goes after a lot of the foreign ones too. I think that's all he's down to. I think he's got all the American releases. Oh really? Yeah. Um, but you know, he has that kid recently. Maybe he's got to sell some of those. I don't know. I don't know. I think he's been buying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. All right. Uh, so there you have it. We love the Joes. I'm sure in future toy hauls, we will be uh, kind of show me if we get any more of these Joe figures, but I am, I'm over the moon for them. I think they're fantastic. And uh, now that you have them in hand, do they, do they live up to what they were like? in the box on? They really do. I think, I think a year from now we, re we revisit this topic, you know, and see what's been out, you know, how yeah. many, how many we've amassed if we're still doing it, you know? <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I think, I think they'll be around for a while, you know, as long as they make the availability uh, a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and I don't know if they will, you know, cause with legends, they haven't done it in however long. Mm, yeah. True. But maybe it'll settle down a little bit cause you can still find legends, but there's just, there's peg warmers and ones that you just can't find ever. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it'll it'll be similar to that if I had to guess. If I had to guess. Um, all right. <laughs> Next up, one last sentinel tier. It's already unlocked. It's already <laughs> done. Like I, when we talked about topics for this week's episode, uh, you know, it was it's to get to sixteen thousand, sixteen thousand backers. For the HasLab, the latest HasLab kind of Kickstarter uh, figure, this gigantic Sentinel figure, 26 inches tall with, uh, I believe, 72 points of articulation and uh, tons of detail, uh, LED lights in the eyes and the chest. Um, it, it, it's so cool. And they only needed 6,000 backers by tomorrow. So tomorrow's the last day. This is your PSA for anybody watching right now. Uh, when we post <laughs> the episode tomorrow, it'll probably be tomorrow morning. So if you're listening to it, when we publish it on the podcast feed, you still maybe have a few more minutes uh, to get your backs in if you're going to do it. But uh, uh, what was kind of cool about this round is that they kind of added tiers, which is another very Kickstarter thing, which I don't think they had done before i think we talked about that uh, already but so you know they have these different tiers starting at seven thousand then eight thousand and then nine thousand and they hit the first three by like what john like, like with, it, it was within days yeah you know it, 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 i think it was the first week yeah yeah um which is great which is really cool and uh so clearly they kind of tapped a nerve here i mean it's it's kind of an army builder 
uh was it 320 bucks mm -hmm. um, and it's it's going to be the ultimate sentinel you know i think that original toy biz marvel legend sentinel was still kind of like the best sentinel but this one's gonna i think easily knock it off the throne just based on size mm -hmm. um you know in that video showing it there with the the wolverine figure it looks amazing so uh there's kind of a lot of you know a bit a lot of this um <laughs> after the fear feet three was unlocked and we didn't you know uh there wasn't going to be anything else i think they gave us like an extra tentacle arm yep uh but you know so they kind of did this last thing which i thought was cool um to kind of have this uh last head accessory with kind of three different faces on it uh, that can kind of rotate uh to give you the different faces um which i thought was a nice ad what was your thoughts on the the extra kind of tier four level here i think it's pretty cool i think just the fact that you know they're still going to include something you know almost make something up on the fly yeah. just to you know i think i think they're so happy with the with the success of the sales mm -hmm. you know and it's just like all right let's see what happens you know, when we hit 16, let's see what yeah. happens. Maybe when we hit 18, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they, who knows? It, it unlocks. So they got 16,000 backers on this. And uh, five of those were done by Eddie Aguilar. Uh, just coming. Yes. Bought five Sentinels thinking one more. Talk me into it. Even numbers are better, Eddie. <laughs> 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 oh man six <laughs> sentinels good lord that's what like 1300 1400 oh boy 1500 bucks. <laughs> oh give me the vapors, buddy. give me the vapors. <laughs> um but uh oh master hoarder clarifies three uh, 350 350 bucks uh looks amazing the ways yeah next year next fall we're not gonna get them um it's <laughs> PD replies to Eddie. Definitely need one more, maybe two. Ooh, damn, PD. <laughs> uh, without six arms, the tri head would be good battle display on its own, but not so much on the figure, in my opinion. <laughs> Master Horton says ten, Eddie. Oh, <laughs> Eddie, I, I may have asked the wrong crowd this question. <laughs> <laughs> um, eighteen hundred bones dropping on that. Good for you, Eddie. Good for you. Yeah. I, it's, Whenever it happens, send us a picture, uh, toygeekshow at gmail.com, or just you know share it here on this channel. But holy moly, that would be an impressive sight for sure. Um, I'm, cu I'm curious, has anybody watched the time lapse time lapse video on the Hasbro Pulse Instagram of them building the test shot prototype of the Sentinel? Yeah, yeah, um, it's cool. It is. Yeah, it, seeing something like that, exactly. You know how you know, it'll come together at the factory, but seeing, you know, just a, a few guys do it by hand, you know, just with the parts and a screwdriver, it's, it's, you know, it's a, a look into the world of the, the toy building that we don't get to see. Yeah, I agree. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Thomas Thomas says I'm uh, between the Sentinel and the target BMF have pre-order set. I'm uh, weighing the balance in terms of who to chose, choose any thoughts. Um, <sighs> Well, we both had a big Falcon. Yep. Uh, I still have my big Falcon. It's up there. <laughs> oh, wait, there it is. And that's, that's I have it sitting up yeah. like against the window. Uh, like it's like it's on a Star Destroyer hiding from <laughs> from the TIE fighters. <laughs> um, it's on the side of a uh, what do you call it? like a meteor? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just because just that's basically like the only way I can display. I love it. It's honestly one of the greatest playset vehicles ever made, but it's it's too damn big personally. Um, at least with the Sentinel, like it, I think you know, it could it would basically take up two shelves left of a of a, Dotol, a Dotolf, um, mm -hmm. and I think we could kind of set up a really cool display inside of the Dotolf cabinet. Um, so, me personally, I feel like go for the sentinel and see if you can get a bmf on like the secondary market because the target one's like over 400 bucks isn't it yeah and i think you can still get one of the big legacy ones cheaper yeah you know if you want to get it loose yeah loose maybe it's missing a few pieces get it for 200 bucks you know yeah and also get the sentinel for maybe the same price of you know what you drop on 450 for the target bmf mm-hmm 
I think I think you'd be happy, happier with a Sentinel because yeah. it's there's a lot more places you can put it. That big Falcon, it's honestly ridiculous if you haven't had one in in hand in person. It's gig. It dwarfs that gigantic T Rex. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> look at that, the the uh, legacy ad at like it's it's just so big, it's so big and it's too heavy. I think I that's why I haven't. I would love to like be able to anchor it and kind of hang it from the ceiling, but it's really kind of too big to do that. The land it, you would need like a big coffee table to display it. Like mm -hmm. it wouldn't even really like my original plan was maybe using the table I had for the attorney and put it under there, but even then it just you need a lot of space. To display the BMF. Um, so, uh, BMF Black Series No, uh, it's just called the Big Millennium Falcon. Uh, it was it's always been its kind of shorthand for the the big one. Yeah, it's uh, a four inch scale Falcon. Yeah, it's gigantic. Yeah, it's it's, it's in it, yeah it's in perfect scale for four inch figures. Yeah. Like it, yeah, exactly. Like the cockpit sits just like in the movie. They did a fantastic job. Um, Eddie says he's going to build a diorama, man. Eddie, I'm sure it's going to be amazing. So we'll do. What are you going to do, Eddie? You're going to, you're going to go ten, uh, or are you going to go the six? Um, and yeah, Thomas, I say go for the Sentinel. Try and get the BMF on the secondary market. You'll, you'll get it for cheaper. You get, you get both. That's what I'm saying. Why not both? Um, and I, I personally think that I get why it's that much. It's a lot of plastic nowadays. It's expensive, but. I also think the Target one has the Force Awakens dish. Uh, does it yeah. come with a swap out uh, old school dish as well? Uh, I don't. I don't know that answer. If it doesn't come with a swap out like old school dish, then definitely try and get the Legacy one, secondary market, open. Um, I'm mm -hmm. sure steel is way too expensive. Or that Toys R Us exclusive vintage collection style one. I'm sure is pricey. All right. One last thing, John. Uh, yes. Before the one last thing, we did want to talk about the death of DC Direct. Pour one out for our homies uh, mm -hmm. over there. Uh, you did a little bit of digging on maybe the background here for the death of, you know, one of the biggest kind of collector toy producers of the past yeah. few decades. Yeah, 22 years. That's a that's a big hit. Yeah. So, so if anybody's interested in reading about this a little bit deeper, um, go to dccollectors.com and there's an article by da, 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 Ashley Wilbanks. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, he kind of gives you um, his thoughts. He's been with DC, you know, in one entity or another. And when AT&T took over and, and bought that, you know, um, Warner was putting under putting DC direct under their, you know, sort of just um, sales umbrella. Yeah, they did. It wasn't, it was almost going to be separated from DC, but mm -hmm. there had been no DC direct uh, solicitations since toy fair. And that was back in uh, February, right? Yeah. So even with uh, you know, the uh, COVID and everything, you know, there's still plenty of news coming out about toys mm -hmm. and the uh, Ashley's uh, essential, um, thoughts on it is DC can't compete anymore. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, it's a sinking. It was a sinking ship for them because, yeah. you know, they can't compete with McFarlane because they're McFarlane's putting out great seven inch scale figures for, for 20 bucks. Yeah. And yeah. the DC directs suggested price per figure was supposed to start at $28. Yeah. Whereas, you know, comic shops couldn't even do that. Yeah. You know, they would they would start them at twenty three ninety nine and up, mm -hmm. but um, essentially they the people at DC Direct slash DC Collectibles back and forth yeah. could see the writing on the wall. It was like um, when AT and T took over, it was the yeah. death knell for for that, and it and yeah. it's it sucks because the the Batman animated series figures oh, were answer. were you know they were diving into that and doing characters that hadn't been animated yeah. style before. Yep. And then the uh, the essentials line was still doing well enough, mm -hmm. but essentially they they couldn't compete anymore. Yeah, and and even with the statues, you know the, the Batman Black and White series that had been around forever, you know mm -hmm. new statues every single year that are that are great. Yeah, um, they knew it. Everybody there knew it. It was it it's just it sucks. Yeah, it does. It really does. It, it's a shame. 
Um, I can see what again, yeah, the McFarland stuff looks great and it is under 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's a mass retail line, so that makes sense why it may come in a little bit cheaper. But even still, I think we even said earlier, like the quality they're putting out at that scale, seven inch scale for under 20 bucks is kind of insane mm -hmm. uh, in the toy market today. Um, so yeah, I, I get it, but I, I do think, yeah, I think when you take a moment, just like thank DC direct for all the work they did. Like when they came out, when they started, that's before, you know, uh, DC universe classics and what Mattel did or before Mo too, like before so much, like they were at the forefront of collectible figures. And even still today, to your point, their uh, Batman anim animated series stuff, um, is still better than McFarlane stuff they put out. I, haven't bought any of the yeah. anime stuff because the, D the DC Dark stuff was significantly better mm -hmm. um, in terms of matching that original thing. So, and if you go back to the, I think some of DC Direct's best figures um, are the the Green Lantern series uh, yeah. between Blackest Night and Brightest Day, the Jeff Johns um, storyline Green Lantern yeah. figures from Rebirth and on. I think yeah. those, you know, all those figures are amazing. Yep. They did an unbelievable job. They don't get enough credit for it sometimes, I don't think. But I think that was DC Direct's, you know, um, just their retail problem. You know, not just, you know, you have to get it from a comic book shop or a specialty yeah. store. It's not like, like you can walk into Target. Yep. Yep. So rest in so, peace. Rest in peace, DC Direct. All right. Let's uh, kind of go to wrapping this up. We have one more thing to talk about, but before we do that, I want to go through the comments here. Uh, Thomas, Thomas says to us saying, but all right, my, <laughs> I know if my wife would kill me. Totally get it. Thomas. Thomas. But you're like, you got to do it. <laughs> uh, Andy says the BMF comes with both dishes. Oh, so that's worth the extra $200 to buy it. again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding you haven't got it yet. i'm sure it looks great all that stuff it also comes with the uh i'm blanking on his name yeah from um galaxy's edge and uh oh I'm, he's awesome on clone wars and <sighs> um, well i can't think of his name right now either uh we'll get back to it uh i'm sure maybe someone in the chat will tell yeah. us uh master says doesn't like the scale of the McFarlane, I, you know, I'm not going to, I agree. I agree with him. that argues that it is a bit of a bummer. It's at that seven inch scale instead of the six inch scale. But I bet it's, I think it's more of a licensing issue or more Mark Farland kind of goes in that mm -hmm. area, or like all those kind of premium collector figures are at that seven inch scale. Uh, the new Mo two line is the collector one is going to be that seven inch scale. So I, but I agree. I like I prefer six inch, like, you know, talking about these GI Joe figures. I love the six inch scale. Um, that damn sp the spawn legs are too long and skinny. Um, I got the the at least the new Mortal Kombat spawn. Uh, I got that. I guess I didn't include that in my. Oh, on this at Target as well. It looks awesome. I don't even really like spawn, but it's a really cool <laughs> toy. Hondo, I can't. God, Hondo, Hondo, right? Yes. Um. So there you go. Uh, clearly Andy has bought it because he knows that it comes with two dishes and it's Hondo. Thank you, Andy. Um, I, I think it looks cool. I think it does look really cool. Uh, but again, I bought my, I've had that BMF for over a decade and every time I move it around or trying to find a place where it's like, damn, it's too damn big. And I'm like, I'm going <laughs> to sell it. I'm finally going to sell it. I don't have space for it. And then when I go to like take pictures and post it on eBay or something like that, or take it to a toy show. I'm like, I can't sell this. It's just too cool. <laughs> But from from my experience, dragging those around to shows, you know, you, you might bring bring one to half a dozen shows and it might finally sell after that long. Mm -hmm. It's it's not an easy sell because of the size. Exactly. Exactly. I've sold I found another one in a collection once and, and sold it, um, but it was missing pieces. So it was mainly sold as like had good parts. I think it had all the landing gear gear pieces, and that's mainly why it sold. Yeah. They sold it for the value of the landing gear piece pieces. All right. John, one last thing as we close out today. A little bit of news, a little bit of toy collecting news that I thought was kind of funny. Uh, recently, uh, I believe it was posted on uh, this this thing here. I think it was Uline. No, oh, Unilad. All right, Unilad. Uh, so in China, there's been really intense rain, a lot of flooding. And uh, this one gentleman uh, collects, I think, Gundam figures, has a whole collection. But the flood was starting to rise up his house. 
And it was coming to a point like, what does he do with his collection? He might lose his entire collection that he's been saving for however long. And he can't swim. So <laughs> what is he going to do? Well, this gentleman's wife <laughs> break like goes on a raft, breaks into the house, and on the raft saves his action figure collection. Wow. Blood. <laughs> In China, here's some video of her. Like, she's just so, like a boss, <laughs> just like chock full of all these, you know, figures. Uh, you know, basically saving the day for her husband. Oh my that, God. Uh, couldn't swim. She could swim. She gets on the raft and saves his, uh, his action figure collection. That's a, that she's a loving wife right there. Right? <laughs> I think uh, uh, I think Thomas Thomas said my wife would kill me. Uh, we all hopefully we all have wives that would do that for us if it if it came to it. But uh, that crazy. I thought that, was that is crazy. That is crazy. Uh, Master Hoarder, what a wife. <laughs> so uh, we will we will dedicate in uh, this episode. Cheers to that man's wife. Uh, you know, risking her life to mm-hmm. save his action figure collection. I wonder if he's going to take swimming lessons next. <laughs> <laughs> or that wife's going to have it over his head for years. Mm-hmm. For years. Um, uh, both John and I's mutual friend, Paul Kane, our spouses would do the same. Thing. Yes, Paul. Uh, 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 is, uh, is, is, is Ron going to jump in the water for you, Paul? <laughs> I hate to bring it to Paul. I don't think Ron's <laughs> Uh, he he might be like he might be excited about a flood maybe taken away no <laughs> ron's the best ron ron's a ron, ron's a great 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 person uh john do you think your wife would would uh, save the collection uh, well uh a lot of her stuff is in that room as well so oh, that would yeah. probably be done gone gotten in for a first you know that would that would be the the first grab <laughs> Yeah, yeah, her own. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, you have kind of a joint collection a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. I do not at all. Uh, okay. Oh, yes, maybe. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, a husband probably told his wife how much they actually cost. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe she maybe she went and saved them so that they could sell them to rebuild. <laughs> maybe that's true. <laughs> a very good point. Uh, you know, my wife. Uh, I think she would. I think she would. I mean, I can swim, but if there was like the trying to say, but there's there's more important things to save, like our children, ourselves. Yeah, those are more important than anything of here. You can buy all this again, um, but to the value of it, uh, you know, I think I've I've told you this, John. I told my wife as well. Like, if I die and it's you know an unexpected death, you need to bring John in just to make sure like everything gets sold for the appropriate amount. Do not. Right. Sell it yourself. Don't don't nickel and dime it at a yard sale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, that's a good place to wrap up this episode of Toy Geeks. Uh, John, I think I dig this kind of live form, like at least uh, f- filmed and from a live studio audience. I kind of, I kind of. Yeah, we need the we need the canned laughter. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is it this one? Oh. Oh, oh, there we go. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I do like. I I like it. I like the comments. Yes. And if if anybody has any uh, another uh, new topics they want they want to hit on next week, let yeah. us know. Yes, we actually we did get an email. We did get an email. We'll save it for next week because we're, we're already kind of over time, but we did get an email suggestion here. Uh, Trey asks, Jay, uh, what did you get at the NC Underground Toy Swap? Uh, Trey, I did. It was kind of front uh, end of the uh, episode here, um, but I picked up a Destro and a Spider-Man, the new kind of uh, retro card uh, animated Spider-Man. So uh, that'll do it for this week. We'll be back uh, next week at 9 o'clock. Uh, on uh, youtube.com slash geek dad life for anybody that are, are watching this first time want to listen to it in audio form it'll be posted the monday after on our feed you can subscribe uh, at toy geeks on itunes or anywhere else that podcasts are given for free 
thanks, y'all, says Master Hoarder. We'll say thanks to you all. Thank you. And until next time, hasta luego and goodbye.